Hi there, this is Mar Haddad here again. In uh, this lecture, I have to explain to you about uh, the VRF light. So what is the VRF? And uh, then I'm going to do this lab. As you can see here, the lab is uh, about uh, nine points. But before I start doing those points, let me go to the lab scenario to explain to you there what is exactly VRF, the virtual routing and forwarding. Then I will come back to the points and start doing them. So let's imagine that we have this scenario. We have here the ISP, which is one router. Okay, now we just uh, now considering that the ISP is only one router. You may have, of course, in the ISP more than one router, but just because now I want to make it as simple as possible. So we have one router here, which is this router, ISP. Now, what I need to do in this case, I really need, for example, that uh, those two routers over here, let's change the color. Let's uh, think that we take, for example, the blue color. So those uh, two routers, they will have to consider that they are one customer and uh, then those two routers they are also for another customer so each of the customer has uh, two offices then uh, those two offices are connected to the same isp i'm not really running now any uh, mpls at this moment i'm just showing you how the vrf work so you can get the idea because we need to use the vrf when we want to use it with the mpls cloud all right, so the idea is that what I can do here, instead of uh, having one routing table, so uh, for example, this ISP, if we look to his routing table now as it is, so he has those entries. He has Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2, Ethernet 4, and Ethernet 5. So 1, 2, 4, 5. So those are his interfaces. And you can see that uh, next to them, there is dynamic uh, active connected. All right, so all those are dynamic active connected. So this is on one routing table. So instead of having one routing table, and because we want that uh, those, for example, router one and router two, they are one customer. So what we can do, we can move Ethernet one and Ethernet two and put them in a standalone routing table. So we just move them out from here and we create a routing table, which we call it a blue, for example. And inside this routing table, I put Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. All right, you get the idea? So then they will go out from the main routing table, or what we call also the global routing table. They will not be here anymore. They will go to a new routing table, which is called blue. All right, so now what we can do, uh, once we have those in the two interfaces in the blue routing table, you can create, for example, OSPF over here. You can create OSPF over here and they can be connected to each other via OSPF. All right, so you can advertise this prefix here or this network, you can advertise this uh, network, and then they can uh, see each other without any problem. So what about uh, router four and router five? So also what we can do, let's take this color. We can create another routing table here, which is green, and we call it a green, for example. And inside this routing table, I put this interface, Ethernet 4 and Ethernet 5. That's only on the ISP side. So I put Ethernet 4 and Ethernet 5. So then in this case, what's going to happen that those two routing tables, they are not anymore, or let's say the interfaces, they don't see each other anymore. They are on two separate routing tables. One is called blue and one is called green. And what you can do, you can also run here, for example, OSPF over here on those two routers and you advertise this network and this network, then what's going to happen, we have two instances here of OSPF. That means that router 2 will not, for example, see this network and uh, router 5 will not see also this network. They will not see each other because we are on two different routing tables. You see, we have one that's called blue and one that's called green. So this is what the VRF is. This is what the virtual routing forwarding. And this is possible that you can create it on the MicroTik router. Of course, now I'm going to just show you how to do the VRF light. Okay. So that's what we are going to do in this scenario like this. This is our scenario that we are going to work on. We have router one, router two, router four and router five. We have to put the interfaces of the ISPs on two different routing table that we make vrf tables two different ones and then we run ospf and we will see how things will work so that's something we call it here the vrf flight of course the same concept of vrf we are going to use it once we want to use the mpls so if you have an mpls cloud inside our isp we have to use the vrf in the way that uh, you also can connect two customers uh, to each other via the mpls cloud as we are doing over here 
All right, so this is what we're going to do in this lab. Let's go back now to the points and start doing that. Point number one, all IP addresses are set as per the graph, including loopback interfaces. So I have already put all the IP addresses. So what you see on the graph are already there. Point one is done. Point two, on the ISP router, create VRF with routing mark blue and interface Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. So what we need to do now, we have to go here again to show you that what I need to do now, I just want to take those two interfaces which are Ethernet 1 connected to Router 1 and Ethernet 2 connected to Router 2. And I want to put them in a uh, VRF table and I will call it uh, blue. All right. So remember, that's what I need to do. And later we have to do on Ethernet 4 and Ethernet 5, we have to put them on green. So let's do that. We have to go to the ISP router. This is the ISP router. And from here, if we go now to IP route, you see that everything is showing up in uh, this uh, uh, main routing table. All right. So you can see we have only main routing table. If you click on it, those are inside the main routing table. All right. Now, what I need to do is to go to VRF. And from VRF, I have to make plus. And over here, what you can do, you can just uh, work with the interfaces. I want to put the interface Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. And then the routing mark, here is the name that we want to put for this table. And here I have to say blue, just to make it easy. So that's what I need to do for Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. Let's do it for the upcoming point, also for Ethernet 4 and Ethernet 5, we make it green. So if I make here plus, now we go interfaces, Ethernet 4 and Ethernet 5, we call it here a green and enter. So now if we go to the route, now we have here all. If we click on main, you don't see anything anymore, right? Because those interfaces, they went for green and blue. You see, they're not anymore in the main routing table. But if we look to the blue, you see that over here. So this is Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2. And uh, you can also go over here, you can see that the routing mark is showing up blue here. And this one, the routing mark is showing blue here. And if we want to go to green, you can see this is Ethernet 4 and Ethernet 5, the gateway. So those are the connected networks. And uh, if we go inside here, green. And if we go inside here also, it's green. So that's what you need to do to be able to create the different uh, VRF. So let's put all to be shown everything. Point number two is done. Point number three also is done. Now, point number four on the ISP router, create two OSPF instances, green and blue, and assign 3.3.3.3 as router ID and put the right routing table. So what I need now to do, if we go back to the picture, so what I need now to do is just to enable OSPF. So uh, I want to make OSPF running on the ISP for, for example, this uh, router and this router, they will run also OSPF, but first we need to run OSPF here. So then what is gonna happen so they can see each other like this on uh, those uh, two networks. And also I have to run OSPF here. So on another process, so those can see also each other, but they will not see, for example, Router 1 will not see the network 5.5.5.0 and the Router 5 will not see 1.1.1.0 because they are on two different routing tables. So first we need to enable OSPF on the ISP, then we enable OSPF on the other routers. Let's do that. Let's go to the ISP. And now we have to go to routing, we have to go to OSPF. Very good. So first of all, let's make the instance here. So uh, I will create a, a new instance and uh, this instance, I will call it, for example, OSPF and uh, here we say blue. So this is the instance for the blue and the router ID, the 3.3.3.3. And over here, you have to put the routing table, you select the blue. All right, that's it. So this is the instance that you need to create it over here. Let's uh, disable the default one. And we create another one. Let's make copy. OSPF in green. And we put the routing table here in green. All right. So that's what you need to do over here. Point number four is done. Point number five, create two backbone areas for each of the instances. So we go back to the ISP. So we are still now uh, working to make the OSPF on the ISP router. So we have 
this instance is for the blue and this instance for OSPF is for the green. Now we have to go to the areas. So this backbone area, I don't want it. I just want to create another backbone area, which is going to be area zero also. Area zero, and here we have to say blue. And this is the area ID 0 .0 .0 .0, so that's the backbone area. But here we have to put the instance is for the OSPF blue. Okay, so this is the area. This one is for OSPF blue. We create another one. Let's copy this one. Area 0 green. And here the instance is OSPF green, area 0. And that's it. So type is default. And that's what I need to do. Point number five is done. Point number six, advertise the interfaces on the ISP router to OSPF. So we go to the ISP router and we have to advertise the interfaces. So let's do that to go to the ISP router. And over here now we have to do the networks. So I will say the first network, which is uh, connected to router one, which is 192.168.13.0 slash 24. This is going to be inside the area blue, area zero blue. And the second one, which is 192.168.23.0, which is connected to router 2, and this is going to be on the area blue also. So this is for router 1, router 2. Now we do for router 4 and router 5. 192.168.34.0 slash 24. This is going to be for the area 0 green. And the last one, 192.168 dot three five dot zero slash twenty four also in the area zero green so so far so good so this is what we need to do on the isp router and now we have to do the work on the other routers point number six is done point number seven populate ospf networks on router one router two router four and router five so those are our customers they just uh, want to make ospf so router one router two they have to think that they are really connected to each other and uh, just making ospf advertisement and router four and router five as well so let's start with router one and router two we go to router one routing ospf let's put here the router id to be 1.1.1.1 and you, over here, you don't really need to change anything with the area and the instance. You don't have to do that because that's a customer router. All right. So here we have to go to networks and we have to say 192.168.13.0 slash 24 in the backbone. And we have to say 1.1.1.0 slash 24. And we should have in a moment neighbor. So here we go. We have neighbor now with the ISP router, router 2 routing ospf and uh, we go to the instance we change the router id to be 2.2.2.2 and then network 192.168.23.0 slash 24 please look to the picture so you know the ip addresses and then 2.2.2.0 slash 24 router 3 and uh, this is the isp router we don't do anything we have finished working from that router 4 we have to go to routing OSPF and we put here the router ID 4.4.4.4 and then network 192.168.34.0 slash 24 and we'll advertise also the loopback which is 4.4.4.0 slash 24 and finally router 5 routing OSPF we put the router ID here 5.5.5.5 and we advertise the network the connected one 192.168.35.0 slash 24 and 5.5.5.0 slash 24 so we have advertised the OSPF on all the customer routers Point number seven is done. Point number eight on the ISP router advertise the connected interfaces in the right areas. That's something I have already done it. So I think I have duplicated this point with the, the point which is number six. So this point is also done. Now we need to check on the router one, the routing table. What do you see? Let's go to router one. And over here, if we go to IP route, look, he will see himself, but also he will see from ISPF only 2.2.2.0. He doesn't see 
on the OSPF 4.4.4.0 and 5.5.5.0. On the router 2, the same if we go to IP route. And over here, he will see also 1.1.1.0. He doesn't see 4.4.4.0 and 5.5.5.0. Let's have a look on router 4 and router 5. If we go here to IP route, so those are the two networks. So this one knows about 5.5.5.0 and this one should know about 4.4.4.0. So IP route, and here we go. So you can see we have separated now our uh, network and uh, the ISP, we just um, separated. We said that the two interfaces for router one and router two, they are like on one routing table. And that's where you can see that everything is working now between router one and router two without affecting anything between router four and router five, which are for another customer. And that's really what the VRF is. So now if we go to router, for example, one, and uh, we go to tools, and we go to trash route, or let's do ping. We go to tools and uh, let's do ping. And this is ping. And if we try to ping to 2.2.2.2 from the source address, which is 1.1.1.1, enter, here we go. We have a ping reply. But if we try to ping 4.4.4.4, we should see it's not working, even though that OSPF is also configured on that router, on router 4, and they are connected to the same ISP router, but because we have created two VVRF tables, then they don't see each other, because they are on two different routing tables, which are the VRF table. You got the idea. Point number 9 is done. Point number 10, ping from router 1 to 2.2.2.2. Is it working? What about pinging to router, from router 1 to 3.3.3.3? So, Ping to router 2 on this uh, network is working, to this network is not. Actually, uh, here it should be 4.4 .4 and not 3.3.3, so this is a small mistake. So to this uh, network is not uh, possible to ping. Why? Because this router, which is uh, having the 4.4.4.4, .4 which is router 4, is not a routing in the VRF uh, table where router 1 is. And again, if you want now, we can go to the uh, ISP router, and you can see that, uh, if, let's have a look on the neighbors. So this OSPF router has neighbors for all the routers, with uh, this router 1, router 2, router 4, and router 5. But even though they has uh, the neighborship with all those routers, those routers, they cannot ping from a one VRF to another one. And if we look now to, for example, the routes, so this router is learning, because that's an ISP router, is learning about all possible routes that are on all the routers. But if we go to router 1, for example, and if we say, for example, here OSPF, we see neighbor, he's just doing neighbor with the ISP router, and if we look to the routes, he only see the routes which are coming from the router 2. Because if we go to ISP again, remember what we have done here on the IP route, and if we go here to the blue, so you can see that we put inside this blue those two interfaces, Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2, so these are the route that are run. Alright, so this is exactly what VRF is, and this is what we need to use when we want to work on the VPN on the layer 3 when we work on MPLS. So this uh, lecture is finished. This is what is called the uh, VRF light. So this is how you can configure it on the Microtech router. You can see it's straightforward. I know that uh, a lot of people think that VRF is very complex. Actually, it is not. Just think as you are creating new routing tables and uh, for each of the interfaces or the subnets, it has a routing table by itself and you can put inside this VRF table, you can put the interfaces that they need to communicate to each other and it works without any issue. So this is what I wanted to show you in this lecture. I hope it was informative for you and I will see you in the upcoming lecture.